President Biden is raising new concerns about his age. It just won't quit this issue. Last week, during a presser on Russia and Ukraine, Biden appeared to have a 10-second mental freeze before trailing off. Take a look. All of us should reject the dangerous statements made by the previous president that invited Russia to invade our NATO allies if they weren't paying up. He said if an ally did not pay their dues, he'd encourage Russia to, quote, do whatever the hell they want. I guess I should clear my mind here a little bit and not say what I'm really thinking. Whew, the incident sparked more concerns about Biden's mental health and the ability to do the job of the president. In an op-ed for The New York Times, leftist writer Ezra Klein urged Biden to end his White House bid, go out as a, quote, hero. From The New York Times, he writes, I think Biden, as painful as this is, should find his way to stepping down as a hero, that the party should help him find his way to that, to being the thing he said he would be in 2020, the bridge to the next generation of Democrats. So this is something that is now being talked about in uh, more mainstream circles. Ezra Klein, a prominent progressive um, writer and speaker and thinker for The New York Times, um, as mainstream an outlet as you can find. Uh, however, I don't think Biden is, go is going away. I keep saying this. No one can force him from the ticket, right? He would have to decide that. And he seems to have every intention of continuing to run, even as we're treated to moment after moment after moment, like the one we just played, where he loses his train of thought, where he, you know, misremember, he tells an anecdote about the wrong person. He, he, it, it's well beyond just saying one word when he means another, or, you know, confusing France and Germany, that kind of thing. We all do that, and then you correct yourself. But he tells these entire stories about people where he's thinking of the wrong person and, now, and loses his train of thought for an embarrassing amount of time. Um, and the presidency is a is a communications job. He's you know the form. That's what his job is to be on TV to discuss what his platform is to reassure the American people that competent people are in charge and are thinking through our national security and our other issues. Is he projecting that confidence right now? He's done less interviews than any president since Reagan, and TV was like kind of a new thing then. Doing filmed interviews was like kind of new. So they didn't have as much of the technology as we have now. Biden opts for more social media posts. But I think people really want to see him speak candidly and speak with the press about what's going on in the country. Yes, it's been a productive legislative session these past few sessions under President Biden. But it's also the case that we we have uh, you know a lot more bipartisan legislation passing because of how close uh, you know the majorities are in both the Senate and the House. The White House said that if we make fun of President Biden's age, or if we point out simply that he's old and not in his most prime cognitive years, they've called this prejudicial. They said the language Robert Hur used, the special counsel used in describing Biden as a well-meaning elderly man, but very forgetful, clearly his age affects his cognitive function, that that's somehow prejudicial. I just don't understand that. The prejudice against old white men, that we treat them so badly, we force them into terrible jobs where they have to serve in the U.S. Congress, and as the President of the United States, we treat them very badly. 75% of Congress is, is white. That's shocking. The The idea that Joe Biden has some kind of pre prejudice against him because he's old is ridiculous. He's enjoyed a very long career. And I think at this point, the assessment is accurate that it's his ego that's getting in the way, that he's served in the U.S. Congress for so long and has been in politics for so long and has tried to be president so many times over that now that he's finally got it, He's clinging on to it, and that's very concerning for the American people. Right. And there's nothing unique to Biden about that, right? The clinging to power of people who are very advanced in age and are manifesting some of the, we're seeing some of those symptoms. That's true of Mitch McConnell. That was true of Dianne Feinstein, who, who died still in the Senate. Um, that's true of so much of our leadership. The average age of our members of Congress has gone way up. Uh, the leadership is as old as it's ever been in U.S. history. And there is no one, there is no 
broader party infrastructure. The smoke-filled rooms don't really exist anymore in in, a, in, a, in terms of being able to, you know, shunt people to the side when they're no longer so politically useful. Now it is, it, you know, Donald Trump is the leader of the Republican Party, and Joe Biden is the leader of the Democratic Party. They're in charge, and they're, they're both very old. Polls show a lot of dissatisfaction with both of them. They don't have a very high approval ratings that, you know, they do within their own parties, but not, you know, broadly speaking, across the, uh, across the aisle whatsoever. Biden, you know, m most unpopular uh, president at this stage in his presidency of any of the, the recent uh, five or six of them. Democrats saying, you know, two-thirds of Democrats, uh, of, of, sorry, three-quarters of all voters and a majority of Democrats saying the age issue is a serious one and it gives them a lot of pause about Joe Biden. You know, that's what, that's what Democrats are saying. That's what swing voters and independents are saying. So for him to just proceed, it'd be one thing for him to just proceed, say, yeah, I'm running for re-election. There's not going to be a real primary process. There's not going to be actual debates. It'd be one thing for him to do that if, you know, if his approval ratings were, were, were super high and it was showing that actually Democrats really do want him. They weren't sending any signals to pollsters or otherwise that they have doubts about Biden. But all of those signals are taking place. And yet they are, you know, Ezra Klein is, is kind of still the exception, right? When you see pro-Biden pundits, journalists, surrogates on, on TV, they'll all say, they're 100 percent behind him and that there shouldn't really be a primary process. Biden is the president. He gets to run for re-election, you know, bow down. That's just how it works, and, which is totally contrary to how actual voters and actual Democrats feel about the man at this moment in time. And I think most people within the Democratic Party leadership realize that it's been the case that for far too long there's been legislation passed that, you know, isn't going to regulate Congress in any way. We're going to pass huge military uh, defense spending, in the case of Donald Trump, huge corporate tax cuts, all of these things that really increase wealth disparity in the country. And Joe Biden is not someone who's really challenging the wealth disparity in the United States in a meaningful way, even though I think many conservatives have been made to believe that he is, but he really hasn't passed any significant policy that's going to even out the wealth distribution in the United States of America. And I think they know that any other candidate that is voted for is going to be one with a strong economic message and keeping Joe Biden in office just feels like the wealthiest people, the people who donate to Joe Biden's campaign, clutching their pearls and trying to keep their share of capital and wealth in the United States. And they're like, fine, he's old. At least he's not jeopardizing our wealth. That's really how it feels to me because the Democratic Party has only gotten more and more progressive. And you're right. The Times ran a national poll last fall that showed 71% of the country thinks Biden is too old. Old, and in a national poll, Democrats overwhelmingly, the majority, think that Biden is too old to be the president. And then in other surveys, not just polls, where they ask about the kind of characteristics someone wants in a president, people view with the same unfavorability someone with a felony as someone who's over the age of 80 being the president of the United States. Many voters believe the age should be capped at 70. So where we are right now just feels like a bunch of old people backed by a bunch of rich people hanging on to the old times for dear life. Yeah, very much so. All right, we'll be back with more Rising right after this. Stay tuned.